What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an excellent day today. Now today was the first open day for trading on the stocks and you can see that Bitcoin is really not reacting too positively towards the beginning of this year, which is making a lot of bears quite happy. In fact, in yesterday's video, I did have a few people comment about the hat I was wearing. So in today's video, I've decided to not wear a sports-based hat. In fact, I wore a hat with a bear on it because of all of the Bitcoin bears. That's what they want, right? They want Bitcoin to crumble. They want the price to fall. Well, I do have to say this, guys. In today's video, the bears might be in for quite a shock because there is something happening right now in the background that is an absolute massive hint to a big shift in the crypto markets for 2022. In fact, what I want to talk about is something that not only could affect Bitcoin, but a massive shift happening worldwide that could affect crypto as a whole. And we need to talk about that because for all my friends investing in altcoins, well, this could potentially be some of the bullish news that you could have expected to hear at the beginning of this year. So of course, we're going to talk about the short term Bitcoin price action. But mainly what I want to discuss is the fact that we do have major changes. 2022 is not going to be like 2021. And we need to go over exactly what to expect so we can make the most out of these markets. And if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you are not subscribed, definitely consider it. And without further ado, First and foremost, guys, we need to say congratulations and happy birthday to Bitcoin. That's right. On this day, 13 years ago, the Genesis block was mined and well, the rest is history. So I just wanted to start this off by saying happy birthday, Bitcoin. And uh, come on, guys, can we get some likes? Can we get can we get some likes down here for Bitcoin? Without it, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. And none of us would have this amazing opportunity presented to us moving forward. In fact, one of the things that a lot of people were upset about was the one hundred thousand dollar bitcoin price prediction now we did have the president of el salvador coming out and he did have a few predictions for 2022 let's start here let's hop into the charts and then let's get into why i believe 2022 is not only going to be very massive for crypto but it's also going to be very different so you gotta stay you got to stay focused. You got to pay attention because this market moves fast. So he says that he does believe Bitcoin will reach $100,000 by the end of this year. I actually agree with this. In fact, I have a $190,000 Bitcoin price target prediction, whatever you want to call it, for the top of this cycle, which is why, no, I don't believe that the cycle top is in. But there might be some more sideways action. We'll get to that in just a bit. He says two more countries will adopt it as legal tender, will become a major electoral issue in the U.S. elections this year. Bitcoin City will commence construction. Well, I don't know. I don't know about a Bitcoin City. Maybe. Volcano bonds will be overscribed. And also he has a huge surprise coming up at the Bitcoin conference. So what do you think, guys? What are your predictions? Drop them below before we get into the video. This is my first real video. Yesterday's video was more of a vlog. What are your predictions for 2022? Do you honestly think that this is it? Do you think 69K was the top? Do you think that 2022 is going to be a massively devastating year for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies or maybe just for Bitcoin and maybe altcoins are going to do well? If so, what projects are you looking at? In fact, if you watch yesterday's video, I gave you three examples of crypto trends that I believe are going to be massive this year and I will be looking to allocate some of my capital into those projects. So if you didn't check out yesterday's video, you're probably going to want to check that out. But Check it out after because we got a lot to talk about today. So short term, having a look at Bitcoin, let's get the lines back on here. You guys can see right here, essentially what happened was we did in fact have Bitcoin breaking above this legacy trend. We attempted to use it as support. We had a bounce. We got stomped out at the middle of the blue zone. I told you guys that $51,600 was going to be a difficult level to break. We were unable to break it. Unfortunately, guys, we have fallen back down to the legacy trend, which is good. Okay, if we go back here and we have a look at this legacy trend line that started all the way back here, right? We had it acting as resistance, a little bit of support here, a little bit of resistance here. We had it acting as major support here, and it looks like we are attempting to be supported by these levels again. However, big problem is once again, the bottom of this falling wedge is becoming the top of this resistance. So Bitcoin has a lot of work to do. We're not out of the water at all. We need to get well above, sort of around this blue zone. My target is 53,000, almost 54,000. Let's say around 54,000 is the area where I would start becoming more optimistic short term. And 55,000 is where I say, hey, 
the bull run's back on, right? Not to say that the bull run isn't on right now. I just think we're experiencing more of a sideways choppy market. So if we actually switch this to the daily, as I've pointed out before, we are sort of stuck between this resistance and this support down here, right? We do have this extremely low support down here. And I did give you an example of one time where the S&P actually did this crazy um, M-shaped pattern before continuing to the upside. Now, is that what we're looking for this time? Not 100% sure, guys, but what I can say is that Bitcoin is getting very close to the end of this wedge. And uh, yeah, if we can't break out of this formation right here, then the next target, unfortunately, my friends, is back down to $42,000. Now, this is interesting because we have had the S&P hitting an all-time high. You can actually see right here, we got up to around 4808. We have fallen down. We are finding some support uh, sort of right here on this heart line. You can see, hopefully, what you want to do is hold this resistance and have it become support. Of course, time will tell. This is the first day that we've had the opportunity to have trading open again, but there's something happening right now in the background, and that's the fact that the dollar has appeared to look somewhat strong on the short term. Now, I don't know if this is because of the holidays. I don't know if it's because of tax harvesting, uh, you know, tax loss harvesting or whatever's going on right here, but you could see that we did have some major support for the DXY, and if we actually zoom in right here, we are having a massive bounce off of those levels. Now, I am anticipating some resistance here at around 97.6, but currently, if we zoom in, it does look as if this is sort of, you know, building a bit of a... Um, almost like a bit of a bull flag here for the dollar, and it could be looking to break out to the upside. Now, before you get upset about this, keep in mind the dollar, you know, if we actually go out here long-term, right, changes to the monthly and just have a look, even though the dollar does have these spikes up and down, ultimately the dollar does trend down, right? We know inflation can't be stopped. I don't care what the Fed says. They're gonna taper. Okay, we've heard this before. Ultimately, the dollar will continue to devalue, but that doesn't mean that short-term, it couldn't look a little bit strong. Now, one thing that was pointed out by Matthew Highland over here is that the US dollar is actually having some pretty glaring hidden bearish divergence, as he puts it. You can see right here, he draws it. I don't have it pulled up. He already did the work for us, so thank you, Matthew. But he does say the last time that the US dollar experienced a bear market, Bitcoin saw its price rise from 4000 to $60,000. If the US dollar begins turning down, it bodes quite well, for Bitcoin, of course, this isn't going to happen overnight. We're talking about, you know, the US dollar here, okay? We're talking global. We're talking about something massive, right? This is not going to, you know, have a major move overnight, but it could signal something that we could expect for 2022. Now, something even more glaring is the fact that Ethereum has been performing better than Bitcoin. In fact, if we go back over to this Bitcoin chart, let me get all this stuff out of here, and we actually take it from the top to the bottom, you can see that currently Bitcoin is sitting at around 33% down from its all-time high. Now, if we actually head over to Ethereum, Remember I said Bitcoin sitting at around 33%. Uh, Ethereum is only sitting about 22%, which means that Ethereum is currently still outpacing Bitcoin and it's not getting hit as hard as Bitcoin, which is not usually common. Usually Bitcoin gets hit 5%, Ethereum gets hit 8 to 10%, right? Altcoins get hit 20 to 30%, but that's not what we're seeing. In fact, if we have a look over here, I told you that uh, this is the Ethereum compared to Bitcoin chart. So this is not Ethereum US dollar. This is Ethereum Bitcoin. And the Ethereum Bitcoin chart you can see right here actually found some support on this midway resistance and is looking to bounce back up. And I told you guys, if we can break the 0 0.084 level right here, the reason that I came up with this, whoa, that is a crazy, crazy looking chart, guys, is be ah, it's because of this crazy wick. You can actually see that this is where we had a lot of this resistance right here. And once Ethereum usually breaks above that level, we usually have a massive, massive rally. So if Ethereum is able to break 0 0.08, uh, you know, compared to Bitcoin, we could be looking for a massive massive altcoin season. Now, what else is telling us this? Well, it's not just the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. It's also the total two market cap or the crypto cap chart. Now you can see right here, obviously there has been some support right here, right? Lots of support. Then we broke below it. Now, interestingly enough, we did put in a double bottom right here, right? And double bottoms are often excellent, excellent signals for reversals. We did have the massive reversal. Now we did hit our resistance up here, but look what happened again. We came down, we touched the trend again. We broke through it, we came back down, danced around in these levels, we touched it again, and look at this guys, we have touched it yet again. And not only are we touching it yet again, but as I showed you, uh, you know, back here, 
where we put in this nice double bottom, there is a potential that the altcoin, so this is all the cryptos excluding Bitcoin, potentially could be looking to put in another double bottom again as well. And if we can get above the $1.46 trillion market cap, well, guys, I think that we would officially be entering into that alt season that everyone talks about. Everyone's always talking about, oh, it's alt season, it's altcoin season, it's alt season. Well, guys, it might officially become alt season. In fact, one project that I told you guys about that I was specifically not only paying attention to, but accumulating into heavily was Phantasma. And I told you that Phantasma was forming this absolutely beautiful asymmetrical triangle pattern. And I told you guys that by January 6th, the latest, we were gonna have the breakout. And guess what, guys? We had the breakout actually on December 30th, came even earlier than we had anticipated. Now, we do know that oftentimes when it comes to crypto, most of these cryptos don't actually get to the end of the patterns. Crypto as an asset class as a whole tends to be a very impatient asset class. It moves at the speed of light. It moves five to 10 times faster than stocks. And you can see right here, we did have the breakout. And from the breakout point, to the top, we have had a massive 54% blast off for Phantasma. Now this is just one project, but if you look across the board, we have seen some very nice gainers and it could be because a lot of people have their eyes on this Bitcoin compared to Ethereum chart. And like I said, if we break out of here, historically speaking, it is alt season and 2022, could be defined by a lot of altcoins. Now, before we get into, you know, what's happening, uh, you know, especially in the space, I just wanted to really go over super quick why I, I have been so bullish on Phantasma Soul specifically. Number one, because I think it's completely undervalued. The market cap is insanely low. And also the fact that we do have, you know, just this nice comparison chart that Chain Change made over here. And you can see so many things that Phantasma does. It has a true decentralized, uh, a, a true DAO, interoperable apps, smart NFTs, and it can even actually do some privacy features as well. And also, guys, I forgot to mention today is actually the uh, last day. Let me let me actually go over to Twitter uh, right here, and you can actually see that if we go over to Costa. Um, they, they are actually finishing up their IEO. So remember, if you guys are interested, make sure that you get over, uh, to, to Bybit, which is where it's happening. If you guys want, make sure you use the links below in the description. Um, this is going to be finishing within the next 24 hours. If you haven't had a chance to get in on it, uh, like I said, look at these projects when they're nice and early. Obviously, a lot of people have been searching Costa, VLaunch as well, which I have been quite bullish on. Um, but not just that, I just wanted to, you know, friendly reminder guys, Costa, you know, get in on that. Um, that is ending soon. But talking about why this could be the year for crypto adoption, have a look at just what's going on in the background, guys. Samsung's 2022 micro LED, Neo QLD, and the Frame TV ranges will add support for non-fungible tokens, including an on-screen NFT marketplace. If that isn't enough, we have Square Enix. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Um, you know, they're very popular in the video game sector. Final Fantasy, I don't know if you guys have played it. I, I got the new Final Fantasy uh, game, the remake. It was one of my favorite games of all time. I've always enjoyed it. Well, Long story short, in their New Year's letter, Square Enix president revealed the company's plan to focus on incorporating blockchain games into their portfolio. Although they did not announce any games that would incorporate blockchain technology or NFTs yet, the letter that was published did reveal that they are looking to explore the idea. You can see that this is what it said. By designing viable token economics into our game, we will enable self-sustaining game growth. It is precisely the sort of ecosystem that lies at the heart of what I refer to, this is the president writing this, as decentralized gaming. I'm not sure why he put that in quotes. I think that's what we all refer to it as. He says, and I hope that this becomes a major trend in gaming going forward. If we refer to the one way relationship where game players and game providers are linked by games that are finished products as centralized gaming to contrast with decentralized gaming, then incorporating decentralized games into our portfolio in addition to centralized games will be a major strategic, strategic, excuse me, theme for us starting in 2022. Now, we're not just talking about gaming. We're not just talking about NFTs. We're also talking about the metaverse. Now, hear me out. And this is why I said I am bullish on layer zeros. I am bullish on DAOs. And I am bullish on ZK rollups moving into 2022. Because if we are trying to build out these massive ecosystems for crypto, for blockchain as a whole, and we have all these different blockchains, right? If we have, you know, we have Ethereum, we have, um, 
Cardano, we have Elrond, we have Avalanche, Polkadot, um, we have Phantasma, right? We have uh, uh, a Terra Luna. The problem is, is these cannot communicate with each other. This is why we need layer zero protocols. We also need layer twos as well, right, to speed that up. On top of the fact that we are introducing or we're seeing ZK rollups starting to become more popular, especially for Ethereum. And all of this is going to allow us to actually be able to absorb this load, which is going to happen in 2022. If all these people are going to start having NFTs and blockchain games, and, you know, uh, the metaverse and, and all of this. I mean, think about it, guys. Blockchains are, well, they're not exactly the fastest technology out there. They, they are arguably one of the most secure, depending on which blockchain we're talking about here. But at the end of the day, we are going to need interoperability so that all of these chains can communicate with each other. We are also going to need ways to speed up these games, make them faster, right? Nobody wants to sit there and wait five minutes for something to happen video games are instantaneous, metaverse reality interactions are gonna be instantaneous, right? Which is why I'm focused on that. And my third one that I mentioned from yesterday's video was decentralized autonomous organizations because, well, if you're gonna be decentralized, you're not gonna have that centralized control. So we need to have something that is equal and fair and distributed, right? Major, major changes in 2022. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet and you're just watching this for the first time, get subscribed. We are gonna be focusing on these bull market, bear market, sideways market. There are gonna be so many opportunities in 2022 and I promise you there will be massive opportunities to make money as this ecosystem grows. And obviously for the rest of you that have been subscribed, thank you again for coming back to the channel. And I do wanna to end today on a little bit of just overall general crypto news. And that is you could see from Finbold, enormous crypto trading floor planned within $3 billion New York casino project. This is crazy. Now, it's not only crypto, we'll get to it, but you can see right here, they say a loss based Oh, excuse me, a Las Vegas-based asset manager with decades of experience and a Japanese-based gaming, gaming, hello, behemoth, are considering a multi-billion dollar casino in New York's renowned Manhattan skyline that would include room for cryptocurrency trading as well as a landing pad for flying vehicles. Okay. I mean, yeah, sure. Flying vehicles, right? Got, got to prepare for it. It's eventually going to happen. In addition to the world's largest cryptocurrency trading floor, they want to build an esports stadium, more gaming, and a facility for events like New York Fashion Week, the US Open, and Fleet Week in their project. So guys, like I said, getting back to everything that is happening right now, Bitcoin, as I said, will remain the store of value. It will remain the savings account, right? That's how I look at it. I use US dollars for spending, average everyday spending, right? Because Gershom's law, you kind of want to spend whatever you think is going to lose value over, over the long term. Bitcoin is like my bank account. That's where I keep my long term holdings. I put it into Bitcoin. I set it and I forget it just like a good old 80s, 1980s infomercial, right? Set it and forget it. And then you have the wealth generation, which is these trends, which is gaming, which is layer zero, interoperability, DAOs, metaverse, DeFi. This is where the money will be made short term, but long term, I prefer to store mine in Bitcoin as the long-term savings account. So the strategy for this year on this channel is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible while taking advantage of the trends that are happening right now. Let me know if you agree with me down below in the description. What are you most excited for this year for crypto? Are you, are you bullish? Are you bearish? Because regardless of whether or not you're bullish or bearish, guess what guys? There were so many opportunities to make money even in the previous two bear markets. I know I was around for them. I saw them with my own eyes and I can tell you, don't freak out. Don't worry. Bitcoin is fine. It's just doing what Bitcoin does. Obviously the more institutions that get involved in Bitcoin, the slower that we're going to see Bitcoin move. And if you actually have a look at it, you know, regardless, we are still trending upwards, right? We are still putting in an upward trend, higher, high, higher, low, yada, 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 bing, bada, boom, and we're going to the moon, right? So that being said, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos in the first place. I love you. Have a safe and wonderful start to your new year week because it is technically the first week, Monday of the new year, right? Although some people may say Sunday starts the week on a calendar, but... Not if you're a trader.
Not if you're not if you're a trader, right? So thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. I love you. My name's K Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. And remember, if you are looking to trade Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, especially using leverage, make sure that you watch my tutorials. I go over A through Z, beginner to expert, how to trade profitably and responsibly. And you can check those videos popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto, and of course, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.